It seems many politicians in the West are struggling to tailor a narrative that could stick when it comes to China's preparation for a war to conquer Taiwan. Some are saying by 2025, others are saying by 2027. Whatever the case may be, it is becoming evident that more hypes emanating from the West is nothing but a bravado, strategic thinking failure, and ill-conceived foreign policy approach. The Ukraine conflict is a case in point. My name is Dr. David Waralu, and you are watching Geopolitics in Conflict. That said, what I want to provide you in this video is my assessment about the ongoing global shift that we are witnessing, one that the West is in denial about. Looks to me that the ongoing conflict and the creation of more chaos suggests that the Western world is in a meltdown and does not know what to do. As the saying goes, when all fails, let's go to war. Whether they like it or not, the world is shifting rapidly from a unipolar to a multipolar reality. Look no further at how international institutions like the ICC, the IMF, the WTO and the WHO and others are faltering. Their credibility is shattered beyond repair while exposing profound instability. The cracks in the international system are becoming visible and wider, and the collapse itself is inevitable. Yet, the Western world seems to me is either living in a parallel world or oblivious to what's going on. Whatever the case may be, the collapse is real. As the world begins its multipolar journey, there are those in the West who argue that there is no global chaos, turmoil, discontent, and or economic downturn. The arguments in the West, for instance, is that Russia is partly to blame for the Ukraine conflict, and it's working towards reshaping the geopolitical map of Europe. However, the same voices from the West refrained from stating the obvious and true about the main causes that led to the Ukraine conflict in the first place. Using history as my guide, how could that be, I ask? Following the disintegration of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republic, USSR, in 1991, former U.S. Secretary of State James Becker spoke in the magnificent St. Catherine Hall at the Kremlin, saying that Western leaders contemplated, and I put this in quote, no extension of NATO jurisdiction forces of NATO one inch to the east, end of quote. Interestingly, the now declassified negotiation documents show that for former Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev to agree to NATO's membership for a newly unified Germany, he made it quite clear that any extension of the zone of NATO is unacceptable. What the West did not expect is the resolve Russia displayed as it intensifies its military operations in Ukraine, leading many to speculate whether Ukraine is a failed state. All the while, China is carefully assessing how the Ukraine conflict's fallout will play out when it comes to its security vis-à-vis -vis the Taiwan issue. With ongoing upheavals in the Middle East, with more on the horizon, the geopolitical order of which the U.S. has been the principal architect and guardian is faltering. Gone the era that most historians called the American century, in which the U.S. managed the global order and was accustomed to its place at the top of every pecking order. Moody's just downgraded the U.S. credit outlook to negative. And the reason was polarization. It's important to truly grasp that the world is afraid, not of the size of the national debt, but of the lack of any plan or willingness by either party to even address it. It scares the living daylights out of investors. And that means that for the next five to seven years, at the very least, the dollar will lose four to 5% per year, which will wipe out 30% of your savings after tax. That's a hell of a debasement. And it means mining stocks are about to finally go on a parabolic spike. 
Our good friends at wealthresearchgroup.com have kindly put together a report, an exclusive one detailing why, what, and when. Download it for free at wealthresearchgroup.com slash boom. While the American global leadership has been declining for some time, we are already witnessing how its, its confused approach and the Biden has affected the global order as we know it. It is too late to point fingers knowing how ambiguous American foreign policy is. American foreign policy, one that is heavy on a rhetoric and empty on substance, dependent on a dysfunctional U.S. Congress, poisoned by the venom of a tribal politics. Look no further than at how the Biden administration turned a blind eye on human rights atrocities in Gaza by vetoing any proposal for humanitarian aid for civilians, then praised itself as the champion of the principles of democracy. Nothing but a consumption of ink, sadly. We are today barely a shadow of the true America that once represented the world. While President Biden and Republicans and Democrats alike for that matter have spoken as if America is all-knowing in its moral authority, the U.S. has failed to preserve and defend basic human decency and dignity. One thing is sure that we all can agree upon is that the rule-based system is fragmented and it is much needed for a new system to be implemented. One that advocates for fairness, real, not perceived justice, and respect of sovereignty for all nations. I am not naive to think that this outcome will happen soon. It took decades for the current system to be where it is, and it will take a few years for the new system to take hold once the necessary infrastructure is put in place. Under no circumstances should we ignore the rivalry and power struggle that exists between the two major powers, the United States and China. While some in the West pretend that there is nothing wrong with the current world order, reality suggests otherwise. The relative decline of the U.S. is a case in point. Yet, while the U.S. decline is taking place, the rise of China over the past three decades supports my arguments about the changes in the global order, whether the U.S. and the West, for that matter, likes it or not. It's a reality. It's a fact. To get to grips with the seismic shifts taking place, consider these three factors. One, China will become, according to IMF, the global economy's biggest growth driver in the next five years, doubling the U.S. contribution. Three-quarter of global growth will stem from 20 countries, and over 50% will come from just China, the U.S., and Indonesia. And as this trend goes, China's economy could overtake U.S. economy by 2030. I would expect that four countries, China, the U.S., Brazil, and Indonesia, to play a major role in the world economy within the next two decades. As to India, while it has a large population, it does not translate to a favorable economic output, as its economic and financial infrastructure is in need for a major upgrade to meet the global standards. I do not see that at this time. And by the way, did I mention the impact of the BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative, on the global economy as it includes new roads, shipping lanes, and building projects stretching to over 147 countries. The idea is to literally rewire global trade from China throughout Asia, the Middle East, Africa, and Europe. Number two, China is also paving the way for its financial structure. As a result, setting up the global pace on a digital economy including cashless payments. It's a public knowledge that in major cities, up to 90% of all commercial and retail transactions in a convenience stores and cafes in China are occurring through Alipay and WeChat. This has been in the works for a few years now, and it's becoming part of the economy in China. How can we forget when Alibaba company alone racked up sales of 
25 billion dollars in just one day dwarfing the meager return of the so-called black friday and cyber monday in the u.s number three china's universities are among the world top rankings two schools come to mind peking university and Tsinghua university these two leapfrogged from well below the top 200 to the top 30 within five years keep in mind that another 40 universities are not far behind and are set to enter the elite in the coming years Looks to me that China students do not have to seek education anywhere in the top schools in US, Canada, or Europe. While all these developments are taking place, we are seeking more conflicts, spending billions on wars instead of building infrastructure projects that will have a great return on the country's economic welfare. If we are to survive the global geopolitical shift, we must first accept that the era of U.S. hegemony is over. Instead, the world is shifting to a new multipolar order, one that will be based on economic blocks, not ideology or financial dominance. And pretending otherwise at this late stage of the game is just short-sightedness. Thank you.